Hey there, it's Izzy here. Let's start by taking a look at two different ways that you might want to put text on the screen. The first option is just to put text on the screen the way that you see me doing it right now. So you might consider this option number one. Let's take a look at option number two. When you want to show text on the screen, especially this kind of text where you have a voice reading what's written on the screen, you can add visual interest by adding highlighted animation like what you're seeing now. This makes it more interesting. We're going to create this effect in Motion 5, and to do this, we're going to start by working on our project browser, which is how we start every project. So just select Motion Project under Presets. I'm going to choose Broadcast HD 720. Of course, you can choose any canvas size and frame rate that you want. I'm going to choose the frame rate of 29.97. The duration I'm going to set for 15 seconds, even though it's a little bit longer than I need, and I'll just click Open. Once my project's open, I'm going to change the zoom level to fit so I can see my whole canvas. I'm going to save my project, File, Save As. This is a good habit to get into right from the very beginning. I'll change the project name, and I'll call it Animated Letter. And then I'll click Save. And now I want to add my first asset. So what I'm going to choose is this letter text JPEG from my file browser. And of course, when I click on it once, it comes up in the preview area. And all this is is a scanned image. It's scanned from a letter that I typed up and printed on actual paper and then scanned it in. Now, why do that versus just putting text on the screen? Well, my personal opinion is that when you use a scanned letter like this, you get texture in the ink and you possibly get texture in the paper and any additional texture that makes it look more real and more organic is a positive thing in my opinion. Okay, I'll go ahead and click import to bring it into my project. Of course, now I have all this extra black space and all this extra white space. I don't need that. So with my image selected, I'm going to choose the inspector. I'll go to properties and I'm going to scale this up. Let's scale it to 100 and see what happens. I'll move it around so I can see my text, and you can see that, okay, that's clearly too big there. It might work for some types of projects, probably not for this one. I'm going to change the scale to 65%, hit return on the keyboard, and now I can fit this nicely inside my canvas. And of course, what I'm doing right now is I'm moving around the portion of my image that appears inside the canvas, which will be the portion that's showing up in the video. Bump this just a little bit more to the left, get my spacing a little bit better, and that looks about good. Now, the next thing I need to do is add the audio. In order for me to see the audio in the timeline, I need to enable, I need to toggle, toggle this button on. That shows the audio timeline. I'll go back to my file browser, and I'll select this Izzy Reading Audio file, and this is just a digital audio file that I have of me reading this letter, so I'll just click on it once here, and it starts to, to preview it. I'll hit the pause button, because we don't need to play that right now. I'll choose Import. Make sure the playhead's at the very beginning of the project, and choose Import so it starts at the beginning. I'm going to click and drag to bring this down so that way I can see the audio waveform there in the audio timeline and the video tracks at the same time. Make sure the playhead's at the very beginning and hit the play button. When you want to show text on the screen, especially this kind of text where you have a voice reading what's written on the screen, you can add visual interest by adding highlighted animation like what you're seeing now. This makes it more interesting. And I'll hit this pause button to pause playback. I'll move the playhead back to the beginning of the project. And this time, I'm going to hit play. And when I'm playing it back, I'm going to hit Shift-M on the keyboard when it gets to this position. And Shift-M adds a marker, a project marker. And I want to create that marker right about when I start saying you can add visual interest by adding highlighted animation like what you're seeing now. So I want to mark when I start to say that. I'm also going to mark the line break right here because I'm going to have to create a separate highlight for the second line. I can't use the same highlight there for this line and that one. I have to create two different lines. So it makes sense to create a second marker there. So what I'm going to do, just in review, I'm going to hit play to play it back and hit shift M here and also here when I'm playing it back with the audio. Okay, let's see what happens. When you want to show text on the screen, especially this kind of text where you have a voice reading what's written on the screen, you can add visual interest by adding highlighted animation. I was a little bit late on that last one. I'm going to hit Command-Z to undo, and I'll move the playhead back to this first marker, roughly, and I'll hit the space bar again. I'm going to try to time it a little bit better. You can add visual interest by adding highlight. Okay, so that was pretty close. And now that I have markers there, it's really easy for me to find those specific frames where I started to read. You can add visual interest, and then also the frame where I break from this line and go to the next one. Now I want to move my playhead to this specific marker. And the way you can do that is under the Mark menu, you choose Go To, and then where it says Previous Marker, you'll notice that there's a shortcut. Option Command Left Arrow and Option Command Right Arrow goes to the next marker. So I'm going to choose this now, but on the next time I can remember it's Option Command Left Arrow to go to the previous marker. And you can see that the playhead bumps to this previous marker, and I'm going to choose Option Command Left Arrow to go to the even to the previous one before that. 
And here with the playhead on this marker, I'm gonna choose my paint stroke tool. I'm gonna choose the group here to make sure that I have it selected and then hit my paint stroke tool there again. I wanna turn on the option, so I'm gonna choose my HUD here. I'm gonna click it to see the different options that I have quick access to. And I want it to be yellow, so I'm gonna change my color here by clicking on it. I'll choose this option, then I'll go to yellow. Just make sure it's changed to yellow and then close it down. And for the shape style, this is basically like brushes that you choose from. So I'll click this little pop-up menu. I'm gonna to go to traditional, scroll over, and let's find one that's called dry marker heavy. This would be good for a highlighter here. Let's see how big our brush is. Okay, that's too big, so I'm gonna change my brush, brush width. Let's, let's see what it's like at about 60. That looks pretty good. And now the playhead, once again, is on this first marker, which is when I start to say you can add visual interest by. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click and drag along this and say, and it doesn't have to be a straight line. In fact, if it's not straight, that's probably better because it looks more like an organic highlight the way that I would if I was highlighting it on a piece of paper. Now you can't see the text, that's okay. We're gonna fix that here in a moment. The next thing I wanna do is move my playhead to the next marker. And what was the shortcut for that? It's Option, Command, Right Arrow. And now let's draw another paint stroke. I'm gonna go up here with the playhead over the second marker. I'm gonna choose Adding Highlight and Animation like what you're seeing now. I'm gonna go ahead and click and just drag over that. Okay. So now if I scroll up, I don't have a lot of room here, but you can see I have a couple different paint strokes. I have the dry marker heavy that starts earlier, and then I have the dry marker heavy one, which starts a little bit later. And to keep things really simple, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag to take this and move it up above the other one so that the earlier one is sitting on top. You can see they reverse positions now. And now I'll select both paint strokes by shift clicking on the second one here. Make sure I've selected them both. Then in the inspector, under properties, I'm gonna move this out of the way here. I'm gonna change the blend mode. Instead of being normal, I'm gonna change it to multiply, and this is gonna allow the black underneath to show through. So watch what happens. With both of these paint strokes selected, I'll change the blend mode to multiply, and boom, now you can see the black underneath. And if I click outside to deselect everything, you can see it looks pretty realistic. Now, so far, we haven't animated the highlighting at all. All it's gonna do is just pop onto the screen using the different timing. Let's see how the timing looks. I'm gonna just move the playhead a little bit beforehand, hit the space bar, Especially play through this it. this kind of text where you have a voice reading what's written on the screen, you can add visual interest by adding highlighted animation like what you're seeing now. This makes it more interesting. Already that's more interesting, but it's not realistic. Highlighting doesn't just appear on the screen all at once like that. We wanna animate it like it's being drawn on. Let's select our first highlight stroke here. Now we wanna add a write-on behavior. There's a lot of different ways to do that. A quick way is just to go to this pop-up menu, go down to the shape category, and choose write-on. Let's play through it and see what happens. I'll move the playhead a little bit beforehand and hit the space bar. Written on the screen. You can add visual interest by adding highlighted animation like what... Okay, I'm gonna pause it. That's obviously not what we want at all. What I'm gonna do is move the playhead a little bit before this first marker, and with the right on selected, I'm gonna choose O on the keyboard. I'm gonna click O on the keyboard because that's gonna create an out point. That means that the animation will end right there. So now if I hit the playhead, move it a little bit before my right on behavior happens and hit the space bar to play through it, let's see what it looks like now. And on the screen, you can add visual interest by adding highlighted animation like what you're seeing now. That was definitely a major improvement. Let's choose our next paint stroke. We'll add the right on behavior here as well. Go down to shape and then choose right on. I'll scroll up so I can see it better. And let's play through it. We'll figure out when we want to end it. Interest by adding highlighted animation like what you're seeing now. So right as it said what you're seeing now, I paused it and I can hit O on the keyboard. Just making sure I have the behavior selected. I can hit O on the keyboard and it's going to make the animation stop right then. I'm going to deselect everything. I'll move the playhead before that happens and hit the space bar. Let's see what it looks like with both animations in place. Voice reading what's written on the screen. You can add visual interest by adding highlighted animation like what you're seeing now. This Personally, I think it would be a little bit better if the highlighting on the second line ended a little bit quicker. So what I'm gonna do is move the playhead a little bit before the write-on ends. I'll select the write-on animation and hit O again on the keyboard to make the out point happen a little bit sooner and we'll play through it. You can add visual interest by adding highlighted animation like what you're seeing now. This makes it more interesting. I think that's a great improvement. Now I'm gonna deselect everything so I have nothing selected. I'll go to my group that contains the image plus the paint strokes. Now I can add some animation to this entire group so that we can kind of zoom in on the letter. The way I'm gonna do that is by going to the properties and setting keyframes. So I'll move to the very beginning of my project first. 
I'm gonna click the disclosure triangle here next to position so that I can see the Z position and I'll set a keyframe. I'll click this little keyframe button. And now I can just click and drag on this left or right if I wanna zoom out or zoom in. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, maybe uh, to like this. Then I'll move the playhead forward in time to the end of the project and then I'll zoom in on it. And of course, I, since I already set that first keyframe, I don't need to worry about setting a second one right now. It, it'll happen automatically. It created a keyframe just by me making the change. Now, if I choose and just kind of move the playhead back and forth, I can see my effect here as I zoom in. I think it would benefit from a rotation too, so let's go ahead and do that. I'll twirl down the rotation here. Let's start with a Z rotation. I'll click the little keyframe button, and I'm just gonna rotate it just slightly. Let's start with it rotated to the right just slightly. Uh, in fact, it says negative 4.5. I'm going to change that to negative 2, so it's really slight. I'll move the playhead to the end, and we'll change this to positive 2. Okay, let's see what it looks like. So we zoom in and turn at the same time. That's looking pretty good. If I want to add more of a three-dimensionality to it, I could also change, for example, the X and the Y. Let's take a look at that. All right, so I'll just add a keyframe, and I'm going to click and see if I scroll to the right. You can see it kind of tilts forward. Let's start with it tilted back slightly, negative one. I'll move to the end here and let's change this to positive one. Let's see how that looks. Okay, I think that's an improvement. Now if I play it back, let's see what it looks like from the very beginning. When you wanna show text on the screen, especially this kind of text where you have a voice reading what's written on the screen, you can add visual interest by adding highlighted animation like what you're seeing now. This makes it more interesting. And there you go, I've created the effect inside motion. Now what I can do is export this out and bring it into Final Cut Pro 10 and use it as part of my bigger project. It only takes a few minutes and I hope you agree that it's more interesting than just putting text up on the screen using something like this. Hopefully this information is helpful and I'll see you in the next video.